Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Missouri went 5-5 five and five in year one under Eli Drinkwitz, exceeding all expectations that anyone had set out for them. But it should be noted that all five of Missouri's victories came against teams with a record of 500 or lower, and all five of their losses came by at least 19 points. A lot of people are high on the Tigers this year, but there is still a lot of work left to be done in Columbia. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, ready to break down, analyze, predict Missouri's schedule and record for this 2021 college football season. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and also make sure to check out everything down in that description below. Go sign up for our expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com. College football and NFL spread picks are one of the lowest prices in the country. Sign up for those today, guys, before the season starts. Our first picks come out here in just a few weeks. And also make sure to check out everything down on Prize Picks. The link in our promo code is down in the description as well. You sign up for that, we're your own personal consultant for the entire year. So make sure to go check all that out, again, down in the description. So we take a look at Eli Drinkwitz in Missouri, guys. Again, a team that really exceeded expectations. Had some quality wins, good win over Arkansas, a huge win over LSU early in the year, uh, but had a couple disappointing performances, like the 19-point loss to Mississippi State. So this is still a team that, again, has very high expectations again in 2021, uh, but a team that still has a lot of room to improve, still needs a lot of work. We take a look at their offense. Eli Drinkwitz, offensive-minded coach, his team ranked 59th nationally in total offense with 402 yards per game, which is not all that bad. Not all that bad considering they were starting a very young quarterback in Connor Bazelak, a guy who actually got pulled or a guy who actually came in in that second game. Eli Drinkwitz made a quarterback change in that second game of the year. Bazelak came in, never gave the job up, completed 67% of his passes for over 2,300 yards, seven touchdowns to just six Interception. So he's a very accurate passer. Should be noted he threw three interceptions in the final game. So you take that away, he doesn't turn the ball over very much. He's very accurate. But Missouri was a team that, uh, with the exception of, of a few games, with the exception of a few plays here and there, they lacked that big play explosiveness. They lacked that big play ability. One of their big play players, Larry Roundtree, their running back, is now gone. So Bazelak is going to have to lead this offense, I think, primarily by himself. Yes, Tyler Beatty is there. Yes, Elijah Young is there, both of which can pick up some slack in the rushing game to help boost that offense, to help out Bazelak. But the passing game is obviously what Drinkwitz wants to do. He has Bazelak to do it. He has a guy like Kiki Chisholm to do it, 458 yards on the year last year. Got Jalen Knox in that wide receiver core. Passing-wise, I think Missouri is going to be just fine. When you take a look at their defense, I'll say that Drinkwitz made a fantastic hire, a phenomenal hire that didn't get nearly enough attention in bringing in Steve Wilkes as his defensive coordinator, a former head coach in the NFL, now coming in as a defensive coordinator in Columbia. So a brilliant hire there, but they got a great hire, got a great addition. They lose a great player in Nick Bolton, the leader of the defense, their linebacker. I mean, he was one of the best linebackers in the nation last year, was for a few years with Missouri. He is now gone. And this team allowed 32.3 points per game, allowed 162.2 rushing yards per game. And in their final three games, they were giving up an average of 49.3 points per game and 7.3 yards per play. So they kind of started to deteriorate as the year went on, right there towards the end of the year. They've got Devin Nicholson, though, back at linebacker. They've got Trajan Jeffcoat back uh, as, as well up front with six sacks on the year. We just really got to hope, if you're Missouri, that your secondary holds up. It wasn't terrible last year, uh, but it's an area that still needs a major area of improvement. still needs a lot of work. I would say more so in the cornerback spot than at safety. So we take a look at Missouri, guys. What can the Tigers do in 2021? Again, a lot of people out there have had them at 8 and 4, some even as high as 9 and 3. Let's see what we have them going this year. We have Missouri opening up with a win over Central Michigan. Give them a 1 and 0 start. The non conference, for the most part, is pretty favorable. Central Michigan, Southeast Missouri, Boston College, and North Texas. Boston College is going to be an intriguing matchup. But they're 1 0 with a win over Central Michigan. Then they jump into SEC play at Kentucky. Well, they beat the Wildcats by 10 last year. Beat Mark Stoops in Kentucky by 10, 20 to 10 in Columbia. But now the game is in Lexington. And a second ago, we mentioned that Missouri gave up 162.2 rushing yards per game. And for me, that's a major concern when you're facing teams that want to primarily run the ball. A team like Kentucky, a team like Texas A&M. You could even venture to say a team like Georgia, although they have JT Daniels now. 
But Kentucky has one of the best running backs in the SEC in Chris Rodriguez. Not to mention that they're hoping to find some balance. Hoping to find a little bit of balance. Now they have added Will Levis in at quarterback from Penn State. The Wildcats may finally have a quarterback that can spread the field. Something that Terry Wilson didn't do all that great of. Uh, something that Kentucky really hasn't had in a very, very long time. Not to mention that Kentucky had the number one passing defense in the, in the conference last year. So you factor in what should be an improving Kentucky offense with a run game that could exploit this Missouri defense. Factor in that Kentucky secondary, again, will be very strong going up against a pass-heavy Missouri team. Factor in that Kentucky has home field advantage, and we're going to go with the Wildcats. A lot of people disagree with that, but I like Kentucky a lot this year. This is a team that could challenge in the SEC East, without a doubt. So they're 1-1. One one. We do believe they beat Southeast Missouri. Shouldn't be an issue there. They're 2-1. and one. Then they play Boston College on the road. That's a long ways to go for a non-conference game. Long road game for Missouri to take on a good and improving Eagles team in their second year with a brand new head coach in Jeff Halfley. Here's the major storyline I'm watching here is can Missouri secondary stop Boston College? This is two teams right here that want to throw the football. Phil Jerkovec is back for Boston College with one of the best wide receivers in the ACC and Zay Flowers had 892 yards and nine touchdowns last year. And it should be noted that one of Boston College's defensive strengths is their secondary. So you have a dangerous quarterback wide receiver duo there, a pass happy offense, the defense for Boston College, strength is stopping the pass. What will be one of the strengths this year is stopping the pass. That's what Missouri wants to do. And now Missouri has to travel a very long way to play BC on Chestnut Hill. Kind of reminds me a lot of this Kentucky game again, but I think home field advantage plays a huge role. Everybody, you're forgetting, this is not the old Steve Adazio days. These are not the Steve Adazio days. Boston College is changing drastically under Jeff Halfley, and they're going to get a quality win over an SEC opponent in the Tigers. I do believe Missouri drops this game. So the Tigers come out of September at 2-2, two and two, and I know many would be disappointed with that. Many expect them to be 3-1, and one, maybe even 4-0, and oh, but those two road games at Kentucky and Boston College will not be easy by any means. So 2-2, two and two, but I do think they get their third win with a win against Tennessee. I will say, you know, these next couple games, with the exception of maybe Texas A&M, are favorable for Missouri to start racking up some victories. Tennessee, guys, they're in a bit of a disarray, a bit of a dumpster fire. Missouri did lose them 35-12 to 12 last year, but... Missouri's heading in the right direction. Tennessee's heading in the wrong direction. The Volunteers are dealing with a new head coach in Josh Heupel. Questions at quarterback, questions at wide receiver, questions at running back, questions on defense. I mean, Tennessee is in a bad, bad spot. Their, their schedule's favorable. They may even get to a bowl game this year. But they're not going to be some elite contender. Their offense is not going to look like it did at UCF, at least not yet. The game's in Columbia. I do believe Missouri wins that game. I do believe they defeat North Texas as well. So they go from 2-2. Two and two, to four and two, and that sets up an intriguing home date against Texas A&M in Columbia. Now, a lot of people want to pick this as an upset game for Missouri. I think the Tigers can upset a potential top 10 opponent in Texas A&M. And I will say, the opportunity is right. Texas A&M is in a prime trap spot. The week before this, Texas A&M hosts Alabama. And to me, regardless of what happens in that game for the Aggies, they're in trouble when they come to Missouri. If they beat Alabama, they're on a high. They are a team with a target on their back. A&M very well could be maybe the number one, number two team in the country at that point if they defeat Alabama. Well, that obviously sets up the classic letdown game at Missouri. If Texas A&M loses to Alabama, whether it's in blowout fashion or in heartbreaking fashion, there is the Bama hangover we have to worry about. And for teams that always get put in that situation, I always hope that they have a home game after that. I think you're a little less likely to be hung over at home than you might be on the road. But now Texas A&M does have to come on the road here. So it's a dangerous spot for Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies. But there's one major storyline I'm kind of keeping in the back of my head here. It's the fact that if Alabama hands Texas A&M their first loss of the year, Texas A&M knows they can win out. And they know if they win out and go 11-1, they're in a prime spot to make the college football playoff. If they lose a second game, say it's to Missouri, they know it's done. So they know after Alabama, the room for error is gone. Any loss and their title hopes are done for. 
And I just don't think Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are going to let this game up in Columbia. I mean, again, you look at the rest of the numbers here. Texas A&M's defense, one of the best in the country, had the number two rushing defense in the nation last year. Their secondary is just as strong as the guys up front. So it really is going to be, I don't think Missouri's going to be able to succeed much offensively. The only edge I think Missouri has in this game is home field advantage, and I think the Aggies can overcome that despite what may happen the week prior to Alabama. So I think Missouri drops the game to Texas A&M. A prime trap game for the Aggies. I think it's close but Texas A&M does get this win. They're four and three. Missouri comes out of the bye week, goes on the road to Vanderbilt. They beat the Commodores 41 to nothing last year. I'd expect a somewhat similar result this year. Week of rest under their belt. Nashville's not a difficult place to play by any means. Missouri will beat Vanderbilt, arguably the worst team in the SEC. And just like that, Missouri has five wins. They're one win away from bowl eligibility. And again, I think for many people, that's the bare minimum. Six and six, that's the bare minimum. They expect seven and five, eight and four, nine and three. But look at the month of November. Sitting at five and three in our eyes, the month of November is very difficult. Arguably the top two teams in the East in Georgia and Florida. A South Carolina team that could be tough this year. And then Arkansas, who has given Missouri some tests in recent years. So we'll start with the Georgia game. I think we can all agree that it will be a loss for the Tigers. Missouri had a top 25 matchup in Columbia against Georgia last year. The Tigers had just snuck into the top 25. It was Georgia, Missouri, and the Tigers lost 49 to 14. Not a very good welcome to that top 25. JT Daniels had a great day. The run game for Georgia had a great day. Missouri's defense just couldn't get anything going. They couldn't stop this Georgia offense. And again, took off big time when Kirby Smart finally allowed JT Daniels to start. Well, now JT Daniels is the full-time starter. And Georgia has elite pass catchers, an elite run game, one of the best defenses in the country, especially in the secondary. It's in Athens. Missouri drops it. We do think they clinch bowl eligibility and win against South Carolina at home, back at home in Columbia. They beat the Gamecocks 17 to 10 last year. And as I've mentioned over and over again in our South Carolina videos and any team that plays the Gamecocks, if you can shut down Kevin Harris, you can beat South Carolina. Because right now, I don't have a whole lot of faith in South Carolina's passing attack. I do have a lot of faith in their rushing game. Missouri, again, gave up over 160 rushing yards per game. It may not be easy, but I think Eli Drinkwitz, I think Steve Wilkes knows, hey, we shut him down. We're going to be okay. We're at home. We're going to be okay. I do believe they shut down Kevin Harris. I do believe they beat South Carolina, especially with the game being at home. They've now clinched their sixth win. Anything else after that is a bonus. Many also believe that the Florida game could be a trap game for the Gators. So Texas A&M and Florida, I think, are the two potential big-time upset games that Missouri could get, right? You know, you look at those two teams. They both come to Columbia. Both those teams could be top 15 teams. So if you're looking for a big, high-quality victory, kind of similar to Missouri's win over LSU last year, it would, be, it would be against Texas A&M or Florida. But I don't think they get either. I think they drop the game to Florida, too. They fell to the Gators by 24 last year, 41-17. to 17. Uh, and I just don't see a 24-point swing coming, especially considering Florida is going to, yes, take a step back, but not as big as some people think. I believe Florida's RPO offense with Emory Jones at quarterback is going to be just fine. I believe their front seven could be one of the best that Todd Grantham has fielded down in Gainesville. And as some have mentioned, if this game was earlier in the year, maybe we think Missouri because Florida hasn't got their wits about them yet. They're still trying to get into their offensive groove with all the offensive losses they had from last year. But the game is so late in the year here that I believe Florida has kind of worked a lot of things out. They've figured themselves out, and they come on the road to the Columbia, a place they have won multiple times before, and I believe they beat Missouri. Maybe not by 24, but they will beat the Tigers. Missouri, 6-5. and five. They conclude the year at Arkansas, a team they have defeated five years in a row. They defeated Arkansas five years in a row, including a 50-48 to 48 victory last year. A crazy ending. Arkansas scores late, gets the two-point conversion, a flute two-point conversion, leads 48-47, to but Connor Bazelak, cool as a cucumber, marches the team down the field, game-winning field goal, Missouri wins by two. But I'll say this, Arkansas is different this year. You know, Arkansas in that game shouldn't have even started K.J. Jefferson. You know, Felipe Franks was out with an injury, but K.J. Jefferson came in and had a fantastic game for the Razorbacks. Now he's the full-time starter for Arkansas. Tack on that he is back as a full-time starter, dual threat capability with one of the best wide receivers in the country in Traylon Burks, and a defense that, yes, was horrendous against Missouri last year. Horrendous against Missouri last year, but a defense that has a lot of returning talent in the secondary. 
Not to mention, it is senior night for Arkansas, a rivalry game. They've lost five straight. Revenge is on their mind. I think everything kind of seems to be pointing to me for an Arkansas victory here. Another close game in the battle line rivalry between Arkansas and Missouri, but I like Sam Pittman and the Razorbacks to get the job done, especially on their home turf. I might lean Missouri if it was in Columbia, but I don't think Sam Pittman lets this one get away, especially after what happened last year, factoring the Barry Odom connection. Uh, everything to me just points to an Arkansas victory. We're going to give him that. We are going to give him that. Which means Missouri, in our eyes, is going 6-6. Six and six. This is absolutely a team that, as we've mentioned for other teams, could be better than their final record indicates. You know, So many potential, as you want to call them, toss-up games. I mean, Kentucky, Boston College, A&M, Florida, Arkansas, all of those are winnable. We know we have them losing all of those games, but every single one of those, to me, is winnable for Missouri. This is a good team. But as we mentioned, we're not buying all the hype right now. All five of their losses came by 19 points or more last year. Again, flashes of brilliance at times, but this is still a team that has a ways to go. 6-6 six and six this year for Missouri. If Drinkwitz continues to recruit at the way that he is doing, Missouri very well will take a major step forward in 22 and will be an East contender very, very soon. But we just don't see that happening now in 2021. A bowl game, though, absolutely is in the cards for the Tigers. And as we mentioned, the future is looking very, very bright for Eli Drinkwitz. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and also check out everything down in the description below. Again, sign up for those expert picks before the season starts. We are getting very, very close to putting out our first picks on our website, so sign up for those today. Check out Prize Picks, the promo code, and the link down in the description so we can help you out and make some money. Both the expert picks and prize picks are going to help you out big time, so do that. Again, all of that down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,